If you know what an earthship is, then you probably think of someone using old tires for the structure of their walls and glass bottles for their windows out in the desert somewhere. And if you don't know what an earthship is, the quick version is that they started in the 1970s with a goal to create a home that would be sustainable, efficient, independent, and feasible for a regular person to build. While there can be potential advantages in that type of dwelling, and I think they are just as interesting and as unique as the people that build them, I feel like it's unlikely that we could house everyone on Earth in such custom structures. So what I want to talk about today are examples of what we can learn from Earthships when considering how we should house people going forward. Imagine a house that is structured in such a way that it more often passively cools and heats itself. Imagine a house that is self-sufficient for power generation. Imagine a house that's more resilient against some of the natural disasters that we are experiencing. What if that house was less expensive than the current traditional housing in most developed countries? Would you buy into it? I don't know about you, but when I think about a modern, constructed, single-family, detached house, thinking about its thermal mass, power generation capabilities, water capture and storage, air quality, or energy efficiency, aren't typically at the top of the list. But if we're going to move sustainably into the future, these are going to have to become headline talking points for housing development. Hopefully over the next few decades, those without homes or those living in developing nations will be able to acquire modern housing and during this process will be in a development and economic position to be able to think from an ecological standpoint as much as a material cost perspective about how we want to develop those homes. The place where I live was designed to be part of a subdivision running parallel to some train tracks. There was little thought given to the orientation of the house, the size and location of the windows, and the thermal properties other than what was required to satisfy some minimum building code. My house has no self-sufficiency. If my power or water was cut off tomorrow, my life would be extremely disrupted. The house would quickly become intolerably hot due to the summer heat where I live. The house is so sealed that an air exchanger device lives in the basement, swapping the air around in the house so that it can breathe. Without it, the air quality inside the house could get so poor that it could make it difficult for me to breathe. Over time, excess moisture would build up, potentially creating mold. Without water, my small vegetable garden would likely begin to wither and die before it could finish bearing fruit. The grass lawn that everyone has would brown. The toilet, sink, and showers wouldn't be useful. Sure, I could try to find additional money to purchase some solar panels, buy some rain barrels, add additional insulation to the attic, and find other optimizations that would make it a more self-sufficient building, but it would all be additions to correct for a lack of initial sustainable and ecological planning. So what are some of the core tenets of Earthship designs? Firstly, they ideally have a passive solar design. This means that they have design features that take in heat from the sun when it makes sense, can block out heat during the hottest parts of the day, and retain heat to release really slowly to keep things warm during cold evenings. Currently, many houses in North America use gas or propane furnaces to heat their homes. Other countries often still use wood or coal, none of which is very environmentally friendly. There has been a trend towards heat pump technology for heating and cooling homes as it can be very energy efficient. But imagine if we design houses to manage heating and cooling more passively. Finding ways to exhaust hot air at the roof level and pull in cooler air near the ground so that machines wouldn't be needed as often to cool things down on hot days could be advantageous, if included as part of the initial design of the house. Also another design change could be larger south-facing windows in homes to take in more of the heat that we get from the sun with flooring and wall materials that can store that heat so that it slowly radiates into the home during cooler evenings. I've seen roof designs with large overhangs or slatted panels by the windows that allow more winter sun into a house, but blocks more of the summer sun. A potentially simple change, creating a more passive temperature regulated home. Another quality of most Earthships is their reuse of materials. Back in 2019, JD Composites in Nova Scotia, Canada built a three bedroom home that included walls made from plastic bottles being recycled into nearly 15 centimeters or 5.9 inch thick foam like slabs. The slabs are rot and mildew resistant and potentially stopped over 600,000 plastic water bottles from sitting in a landfill somewhere. And this isn't the only house to do such a thing, as Ecoplast Solutions built one in Alberta with 1.2 million water bottles. These are not the only places in the house where such products can be used. There are many types of recycled plastic materials available for building decks, some of which, like Newtech Wood and Trex, 
include reclaimed wood fibers for that extra authentic touch. There are many people that include reclaimed lumber in their house for ceilings, flooring, or doors, but you can also get recycled cork, recycled carpet, and recycled rubber flooring tiles. There are countertops made from recycled glass and a product called Paper Stone, which is a post-consumer recycled paper coated with a petroleum-free resin. Diverting approximately five tires and over 3,000 plastic bags from landfills, Malarkey Roofing Products uses that rubber and plastic to create roofing shingles. And did you know that clay bricks have a lifespan of up to 500 years? That means real bricks can be used over and over in different building projects, either by harvesting the complete bricks for reuse or crushing them into a dust and then reforming them into perfectly usable new bricks. For insulation, a method that I appreciate is the post-consumer recycled denim insulation that's available which recycles old jeans. Environmentally sustainable processes are important and the process to recycle one product into another to be used as building materials is likely very energy intensive. But as our energy generation mix continues to get greener, this type of transformation becomes better overall. The third major intention of Earthships is to have a minimal reliance on public utilities and fossil fuels. As solar has dropped in cost, it has become more popular, but consumer power generation systems are still relatively hard to find, can be delayed by permitting, or aren't as efficient as larger grid scale systems. We need companies that are making power generation that the masses can buy and install in their homes to reduce our dependence on the grid and the heavy carbon emitting sources that often feed it. I love seeing the increase in solar power, but we're lacking in other types of renewable energy generation systems. Where are the vertical wind turbines on rooftops? While the passive design features might be the primary way someone could heat or cool their home, depending on the location and the land you have available, you could heat or cool your home using a ground loop geothermal heat pump system. While currently expensive to install, there are various types and sizes of systems that could greatly reduce your heating and cooling energy consumption. This technology mixed with specialized design characteristics and a renewable energy source could allow you to go off grid for energy, heating, and cooling. As for water and sewer, these can be more difficult. Rainwater collection systems are available for watering your plants, but they aren't as common for adding water to the systems in your house. But off-grid housing will sometimes install distillation or reverse osmosis systems and a UV water purifier to make the collected water drinkable and usable within the home. Reverse osmosis systems are typically less energy intensive than distillation systems, which can be an important factor if we're trying to create an eco-friendly home that doesn't continually rely on public utilities. For dealing with sewer, we should be looking at water reuse, where doing dishes, washing your hands, or showering could all be easily used to flush the toilet or be lightly treated to be used in gray water planters to grow food. The goal of our more eco-friendly house should be to find ways to use water at least twice before sending it to the sewer system or the septic system. The food production opportunity is another element of Earthships that we should be taking a second look at. As we've seen with supply chain issues, disruptions can make getting food more difficult or more expensive, and with hydroponic and aquaponic systems becoming more available, there is an opportunity to grow healthy food at home. The plants can even help improve the air quality of the home as a secondary function. One of the most popular methods of building an Earthship is through cooperative building, where a group of people, not usually skilled craftspersons, come together to work on housing. I believe this idea of finding ways for non-skilled people to build major parts of homes needs a resurgence, as long as it can be effectively supported by industry and regulators. I don't want anyone to get hurt or experience issues with their homes, but I am a huge fan of cooperatives, and even more so if we can get skilled trades to partner with groups and work together. Would you ever help build a house in your community? With all of these methods combined, we could have a home that requires a low amount of energy, meaning it doesn't require a massive amount of power generation technology. It is built from sustainable or recycled materials, it doesn't completely rely on technology to heat or cool itself, and the technology that it does have is highly efficient and used to make the house more eco-friendly. It has multiple systems for managing water and waste, and maybe it could be, at least in part, built by cooperatives of people, including both professionals and interested non-skilled people. None of this even touches on the potential growth of more traditional style Earthship community developments in places where land is abundant and the regulatory framework exists to support them, or how Earthships can often be less expensive than traditional housing, making it more approachable and appealing to many people. My hope is that with an increase in renewable energy production and more people wanting green materials to build their homes, 
we can slowly see opportunities for housing to not only be more available, but more friendly to our planet. And we need every advantage we can find to solve our current housing crisis. So check out my recent video on changes we could make to solve the housing crisis.